not that long ago that I was editing in Avid, exporting out to Pro Tools for sound design, exporting out to After Effects for any visual effects need, exporting out to Adobe Encoder or Apple Compressor for delivery, and that's not even any color grading work if Avid couldn't handle that. Now you can do it all in one application, which is incredible. As we talked about in the, at the end of the last lesson, DaVinci Resolve pages are how you do these different functions, and they just work together seamlessly. So that's we're going to take a look in this lesson. I'm going to go into more detail on some of the pages that you're using right now, or that you're going to use early on, and then some of the pages like sound design, color grading, etc. we'll cover in more detail in those specific courses, okay? So let's take a look. Each page in Resolve is accessed by clicking one of these icons on the bottom. You can also hold down shift and then hit numbers two through eight to navigate through the pages as well. So let's take a quick look at what each of the pages does. First, to make sure we're seeing the same thing, go to Workspace, Reset UI Layout. That puts DaVinci Resolve back to the defaults in case anything was changed around. Now let's start down here with the media page. And by the way, if you don't see all of the icons that I have here, go up to the top to Workspace, show page and make sure each one has a check mark by it. So the media page, this is where you import media into your project. And we'll dive into the pages in more detail in a second, I'm just doing a quick overview. The cut page, this is one of the areas you can start assembling footage on a timeline. And then the edit page is the page I prefer and it's where you're gonna spend a lot of time cutting your film together. Fusion is where you do visual effects. Color is obviously where we're color grading our project. Fairlight is sound design. And Deliver is where we're exporting our project or, or parts of our project for any purpose, whether it's sending it off to a festival, uploading to YouTube, etc. And then remember, holding shift down and hitting numbers two through eight will take you through these pages quickly. And a thing to know about the pages, if I was on the edit page working in a timeline and then I hit shift six or clicked on color, I'm going to be in the same place on my timeline in the color page. That'll make more sense when we actually have some footage loaded up here and we have a timeline to look at, but just know that the pages all are looking at the same timeline. So when you're moving through them, it's looking at the same place that you're working, but just through the lens of a different part of Resolve. So now let's go into more detail. We're gonna begin with the media page. This page is all about importing media into your project. You can import media on other pages too, but the media page is dedicated to that task. Here's what you need to remember about DaVinci Resolve. We're only linking to files on your computer, your hard drives, when we're importing the footage. So we're not actually importing anything. The reason this is a big deal is because in the past, some nonlinear editing systems, NLEs, would actually ingest the footage and make their own container, like Avid would make MXF files from whatever footage you had. That's not what we're doing here. So if you move files around later, once you've linked it up in Resolve, those links will be broken and Resolve won't know where the files go went. And you can relink them, we'll cover that in another lesson, but just understand that's how this NLE is working. So with that, the media page is essentially two main sections. The top area here is dedicated to media locations, browsing for media, and then viewing that in a viewer. And then this area down here is your media pool. So let's start up here. What is this about? You can import media from anywhere into Resolve, but there's advantages to making Resolve aware of a media location. So if you have an external hard drive where you're keeping your footage, you wanna make Resolve aware of it. So just move over here to the top left and right click, add new location. And you can add an entire drive or more specifically, you can just add the folder on that drive that contains your media. So for example, I'll just choose my Resolve Original Media folder, which contains all my films, and click Open. And then you'll see it appear right there. For this lesson, that's on my computer. Normally that'd be on an external drive. Now with that drive added, you can just click on it, go to your film, go to Raw, and then your Scenes, and then we have all of our takes from that day. I can double click on any of these and hit Play and watch it. I can also drag this which is called scrubbing through the footage. I can listen to audio, etc. But I can't use any of these files in Resolve yet because they haven't been added to the media pool. So when we import media to the media pool, it's creating those links within Resolve to our hard drive 
And that's what we have to do to work with the footage. So how would we do that? Well, there's multiple ways. For example, as we've talked about a little bit, during production, I'm coming back to editorial at night, copying the footage off of my media cards. And if I brought those files into Resolve to check them out, I would come in here and I'd create a bin called scenes. In editorial, they actually had all of these bins where they would lay strips of film to organize the movie. And I can't imagine cutting a movie that way. But it's fun to have that throwback in our modern editing applications. So I have a main bin called scenes. And then what I would do is I would mimic my folder structure within Resolve. So I'd open the scenes bin and I'd create a bin for each scene, just like we did on our computer. So for example, I'd do, and then I'd open that folder, hit Command I, go to raw, scene one, and then I'd highlight all of these and click open to import them. And then by the time you're done shooting, you have your entire film in all of the scene folders and it's all organized just like it's organized on your computer. It doesn't have to be that way, but I just think that's the best approach. Now let's imagine you'd shot your movie. It was a short film. You get it, did it in one day and there was only three scenes. So kind of like this. There's a faster way to do it besides manually creating each bin and then importing into each of those bins. So let me just delete these clips. Okay, let's check out the other way. I'm gonna click on master. In fact, I'm just gonna delete the entire scenes folder, which will remove any bins I created within it. Okay, so we're back to the start. I go up here to my media browser, click on my main drive for the film, and then right click on raw and choose add folder and subfolders into media pool, create bins. Make sure you do the create bins option. And then look at that. What that did is it created all of the bins for me with the media already imported so much faster. Again, if we're adding stuff as we're shooting through production and we have a lot of scenes, this isn't the approach. But if you do have stuff already shot and you want to do a quick add, this is another way to do it. And then I just go to raw, right click and rename bin and call that scenes. Cool, right? And there's other ways you could add files. For example, let's say let's just delete all these and I could go to finder, go to my scene one folder and literally highlight them and drag them all into my bin and it creates the same exact links. And a reminder too, let's say when you did this, you missed one, but you don't know which one you missed. And, and maybe you had a lot more takes in this. And you're like, ah, oh, I don't wanna manually go through all this. In fact, let me do an example. Let me delete a couple of these clips. Okay, so I'm missing a couple clips. I don't wanna meticulously go through my list and figure it out. Just do Command I, highlight them all again, and open. It doesn't override anything. It just imports the ones that we're missing. And those are highlighted in red here. So as you're shooting your film, if you shoot more footage for a specific scene, you can literally just go back to that same scene folder after you've added them on your computer and import all the clips again, no big deal. Now that we have our clips linked up, there's some cool things you can see on the media page. For example, if I click on one of these and look over here on the right, I'll see a bunch of information about the file. So what's metadata? Metadata is information that's added to your video file. So when you do a take on your camera, you have the actual footage and then you have other information like the frame rate or the white balance, etc. And this might change a lot from camera to camera, but the Pocket Cinema camera has metadata that you can use when shooting in RAW, Blackmagic RAW, to manipulate that footage like we've talked about already, changing the white balance. So for example, let's take a look at some of the metadata here. I'll hit the down arrow and let's choose camera. It shows me the type of camera, the frame rate, shutter, ISO, all kinds of cool stuff. I'm not gonna go through all of these, you can explore those, but one thing I wanna mention, if I choose shot and scene, I can put in custom info here if I want to remember something, but the important thing I wanna point out is keywords. So what is this? Keywords allows me to create smart bins, which is a fast way to locate footage. For example, let's say you wanna rapidly access all footage from a certain shooting location because you're gonna be shooting there multiple days throughout production. So I could enter a keyword here, cabin. And then over here on the left now, I have smart bins, keywords. And if I expand that, there's my cabin. And if I click cabin, it's gonna show me all of the clips that have that keyword specified. So you can see the power of this. Keywords gives you fast access to footage, especially when you have a really big project and you might forget what day you shot something or where you did some funky organization. If you've used keywords, you can quickly locate all of those clips. Hopefully this has been helpful. Hey, and if you like my training, I highly recommend you check out my online film school, Write and Direct, writedirect.co.
What's this about? Two reasons I did this school. Number one, to sidestep the monstrous cost of going to traditional film schools. Here's why. When you graduate from film school, I've done it, I know what this is like, you're faced with a sobering reality in Hollywood. Nobody's gonna hire you because you went to film school. They kinda wanna know what you've done. What are your credits in IMDb? What are you capable of? So after you graduate, you have to start making your own movies, but it's on your dime. And if you spent all of your money on school, you could be in trouble. Secondly, I teach you how to make a movie from development through post-production. I'm talking, besides screenwriting, I'm talking setting up lights, operating camera, gimbals, editing, color grading, everything, right? Now you might be thinking, hey, I just wanna direct, and I get that, but here's the thing, when you're first starting out, if you can't afford crew, you can get held back really fast. I've seen this happen before to directors who don't know how to do it all. They get stuck depending on technical people. And as Robert Rodriguez says, if you wanna be unstoppable, you gotta know how to do it all. It's not just about being creative, you have to become technical. And so that's what Write and Direct does for you. Check it out, writedirect.co. Hope to see you there, and if not there, I'll see you on the channel very soon. Thank you.